It is no secret that I love to listen to music or an audiobook on the go. For which I use my smartphone in combination with some good old wired earphones. The only problem sometimes is though, that the loudness of certain audiobooks can be a bit quiet. Even if I crank the volume up to the maximum. So what do we do if we want to increase the loudness of an audio signal? Of course, we build an audio amplifier. And in this video, I will show you how to create this super simple and awesome sounding audio amp that plugs right into your phone's headphone jack and USB Type-C port in order to boost the volume of the audio signal coming out of your phone. Along the way, I will not only tell you how to easily build such a Class A audio amplifier, but I will also tell you how to get 5V power from your phone's USB Type-C port. Let's get started! This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, which is a PCB manufacturer with very high standards for their product quality. It is so high that their complaint rate is lower than 0.2%. So why not try out their service by uploading your Gerber files today and thus ordering affordable and high quality PCBs quickly. First off, let's gather all the components we need for Class A audio amp. As you can see, we only need one BC337 NPN BJT, four resistors and two capacitors, which we have to connect to one another according to this schematic. And since we want to amplify a stereo signal, we will need to build up the circuit twice. But before actually testing the circuit on a breadboard, let's firstly talk about how the amplifier works and how I chose the values for its complementary passive components. As already mentioned, the heart of the amplifier is a BJT, or bipolar junction transistor. I already created a video about this component, which I highly recommend you to watch, because I will not go over all the basics once again. But in a nutshell we can say that when a base current is flowing, then a collector current can flow with a value of the gain factor multiplied by the base current. So if the base current is a music signal, then the collector current will also be a music signal, but with a higher current value, which is basically the loudness amplification we are looking for. Sounds pretty straightforward, but of course such a simple setup does not work just yet. As you can see, while using a sine wave created by a function generator on the base input of the transistor, pretty much no current flows through the collector. And there's also only the DC supply voltage visible at its collector emitter path. The problem is the voltage drop across the base emitter path which is around 0.7 volts. So we have to increase the sine voltage maximum above this value before anything happens on the output side of the BJT. But if we have a look at a common audio signal of a phone, we can see that it comes with maximum and minimum voltage values of around plus minus 1 volts. That means that pretty much all of the input audio signal would get ignored by the BJT, which is definitely not what we want. Instead, we have to add such a resistor network to the base of the transistor, in order to bias the base with a DC voltage and current. This way, we can let the input voltage slash current oscillate around a DC offset value, and thus all of the input signal gets used for the amplification. The only problem of such a biased Class A audio amp design is that the transistor is now always on, since a QS and current determined by the resistor network is always flowing. Class B or AB amplifiers however, which I partly presented you in a previous video, do not have this problem, since they use two transistors which both handle more or less one half wave of the input signal. That means they are more efficient, but can have problems with crossover distortions or turn on times, 
and are always a bit more complex to design and build. Class A amps, however, are simpler to build and feature a super linear amplification with very low distortions. But then again, their maximum efficiency is usually around 25%, which is horrible. But since we are only using them for headphones, so a small load, and with a relatively low quiescent current, it will be just fine. And with that being said, the input side of the amp should be clear. But what about the two resistors on the output side? Well, they are basically used to set the operation point of the amplifier. They define the collector current, the base current and the DC offset voltage at which the output voltage will oscillate around, so that it has enough space between the upper and lower voltage limits. FYI though, if the output voltage wants to exceed those limits, then the audio begins to clip, which looks like this and sounds horrible. Last but not least, we also got two capacitors to basically get rid of the DC voltage for the audio inputs and the output signal. And with the basic functional principle out of the way, let's start to select values for the components. To do that, I firstly had to decide on a collector current, which later directly determines how loud the amplified music will be. I did calculations and practical tests for 1 mA, 10 mA and 20 mA. And I have to say that 1 mA was too quiet, 10 mA featured clipping at the maximum amplification and 20 mA was pretty much the sweet spot with no distortions and loud enough amplification. To prove it, here is how the max audio level of my phone usually sounds like. And here is the amplified version with 20 mA. And now that we got the collector current of 20 mA, we can calculate RC, which is the supply voltage divided by the collector current and by 2, so that the output music signal swings around half of the supply voltage. This equals a value of around 130 ohm. The supply voltage, by the way, will be provided through my phone and is around 5.2 volts. Next, the emitter resistor usually drops around 10% of the supply voltage. And since we know that the collector current is flowing through it, we get a resistor value of 26 ohm. Now we can calculate the base current by simply dividing the collector current through the gain factor which is around 170 at 20 mA. The resistor values for R1 and R2 can then be calculated through the base current, supply voltage and base ground voltage, which gave me values of 3.4 kilo ohm for R1 and 1 kilo ohm for R2. Last but not least, we can throw in some common 10 microfarad capacitors for decoupling. And we are basically done. Now, this class A amp is rather basic, since you can add way more components to improve it. And my calculations might not have been the most precise and accurate ones. But I was still very happy with the audio quality of my built amp. And that is all that counts, right? But if you want to dig deeper into the subject, then feel free to have a look in the video description, where I linked some pretty useful articles. Anyway, after I was done testing my amp on a breadboard, it was time to move it underneath my phone. To firstly get power from it though, I ordered myself such a USB Type-C breakout board. But after plugging it in, I realized that the supply voltage and ground pin of the board didn't feature a usable voltage. The solution was to basically desolder its 56 kilo ohm resistor and replace it with a 5.1 kilo ohm one, which is connected to ground. This way, we apparently added a 5.1 kilo ohm resistor between the CC pins and ground, and thus we now got 5 volts between the voltage bus and ground pin. So, I soldered this connector along with an audio jack to a piece of perf board 
around which I then added all of the components for the stereo class A amp, which I then soldered to one another according to this finalized schematic. After the soldering process was complete, I added a bit of hot glue for stability, designed a fitting enclosure for the project in Fusion 360, 3D printed it with my Prusa 3D printer and added the housing to the circuits. And just like that, you can make your own Class A audio amp for your phone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!